The NVIDIA RTX 5070 Ti is what I consider the middle child of the 50 series GPUs. And as prices of GPUs creep closer and closer back down to MSRP, and every other PC component is absolutely blasting off to the moon right now, I've been getting asked more and more if the 5070 Ti is the right card to go with. And I think that it might be time right now to invest a bit more into your GPU before they inevitably jump in price again. But with the well-endowed 5080, 5090 available, the impending announcement of the 5000 Super Series cards, is the 5070 Ti really the card to buy right now? Let's dive in to the 5070 Ti a bit and see not only if it is the right GPU for your stream, but what CPUs I pair with it as well to get the best bang for your buck. You better grab your favorite drink because this is going to be a good one. Speaking of drinks, uh, cheers to Geekodo Gamers for making this video possible. Geekodo Gamers offers a very long list of creator-focused gear, including studio lights, LED lights, light modifiers, tripods, card readers, and even this microphone arm right here. All insanely important things when it comes to content creation and streaming. And right now you can use code DDT10 for 10% off your entire order from the link down below. <laughs> Cheers. Now, like I mentioned before, the 5070 Ti is the classic middle child. Absolutely perfect, just like me. It's not the spoiled baby, the 5060 Ti, getting away with absolute murder at 1080p and eight gigabytes of VRAM. It's also not the overachieving oldest sibling of the family, that 5090 going to the expensive Ivy League school just to be able to see every individual shadow on each individual strand of hair in a game. The 5070 Ti is the workhorse, the reliable working class card. Unlike the non-Ti version, the 5070 Ti comes packed with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Finally, NVIDIA has given the middle child new clothes instead of the hand-me-downs. 16 gigabytes of VRAM is honestly the sweet spot right now. It absolutely solidifies this card as a 1440p destroyer and a very capable entry-level 4K card. If you are buying this for 1080p, just stop. Just stop right now. It's Kind of like buying a Ferrari to deliver Uber Eats in a school zone. Unless you are planning on upgrading your monitor sometime soon, it's just going to be wasting away playing 1080p esports titles. Now, price wise, we are looking at an MSRP of $749 for this card. At the moment of filming, they are a heck of a lot closer to $800. And yes, that does hurt. I know it's not a small chunk of change by any means. But compared to the $1,300 at a minimum that you'd be dropping on anything more powerful, this is what I consider the smart money zone. You're actually going to be getting the use out of this card uh, and, and make it worth it. Unlike what I really believe about the 5090, I really don't think that that is actually a consumer level card. On the flip side, you have the AMD equivalent card, the 9070 XT. But wait a second, Devin, that's AMD's top of the line card right now versus the middle child of the NVIDIA lineup. That's not fair. <laughs> the reason, though, that we are comparing the 9070 XT to the 5070 Ti is that the 9070 XT is actually cheap than the 5070 Ti right now, coming in a lot closer to that $700 mark. So while Team Red's encoders have gotten way better for streaming, if you care about ray tracing or you use NVIDIA Broadcast for your camera, mic, the 5070 Ti is still the set it and forget it kind of king. It just, it just works better. 
All right, all right. So you have chosen the 5070 Ti as your GPU for your next streaming or gaming PC. Here is what I would pair with it CPU wise, because this is a powerful GPU. We can't just pair it with a potato. If you bottleneck this card, I will personally come to your house and shake my head at you in disappointment. I'll, I'll do it. All right, so here are the three options that I would recommend. The absolute hero best combo for streaming and gaming and content creation, I think is currently the Intel Core Ultra 7 265KF. This is the do it all, exactly what I actually built on stream last weekend. This Intel Core Ultra 7 265KF with the 5070 Ti. This is the perfect partner, but why exactly? First off, the price. It kind of sits right in the middle right now. It's got that middle child energy, if you know what I mean. It's got the P cores to be able to push high frames in Call of Duty and Fortnite and Valorant, while those E cores have enough juice to still work through OBS, Discord, Spotify, those 47 Chrome tabs that you have. The 5070 Ti is powerful enough that you might want to actually stream 1440p and the Core Ultra 7 is going to be able to handle that, the multitasking loads without breaking a sweat. It's a responsible, reliable pick. It is the designated driver of CPUs. And right now, price-wise, it's hard to beat that kind of power and performance for the price. All right. And if you are like me and money is not your biggest worry right now, I'm just kidding. Uh, who has money right now? But you also want the absolute most frames possible in your game. You just really, really need to brag to all of your friends about how cool your gaming PC is. Yo, Josh, my computer has more numbers than yours then you have to go with AMD. The Ryzen 9 9950X3D is an absolute monster of a CPU. The 3D vCache by itself is basically magic, especially for unoptimized games. I'm looking at you, Marvel Rivals. Paired with a 5070 Ti, this is an absolute 1440 high refresh beast of a machine. This chip is going to win awards. This is going to be very good for a very, very long time. Whether you are creating content, whether you are streaming, gaming, as long as your wallet is okay with it, you are not going to be disappointed with this chip. But what if the 5070 Ti ate your entire budget? Whatever you do, do not drop down to an i3 processor you'd be leaving a ton of performance on the table with that. About the cheapest and the oldest CPU that I'd recommend to pair with the 5070 Ti is probably the Intel Core i5 12600K to 14600K. It's, it is last gen for sure, but it punches way above its weight class, especially for gaming. The 14600K is a really, really good processor. It is not going to bottleneck your 5070 Ti, especially in 1440p gaming. You will lose a little bit of multitasking power, especially compared to the Core Ultra 7, but you're going to be saving enough cash that, I don't know, you might be able to like buy some RAM or something. I don't know. All right, so the Pixel Pub verdict for the best CPU to pair with your 5070 Ti, the best all rounder hero designated driver CPU, my personal pick, the Intel Core Ultra 7 265KF. If you're just looking for the most FPS and you want an incredible CPU, go with the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D. If you want the best bang for your buck and just need to get something up and running and off the ground, go with something like the i5 14600K. The 5070Ti is what I think right now the best GPU recommendation for most people out there right now. It gets you into the high-end gaming club without necessarily the high-end price. 
like you're not gonna have to sell your car to get it kind of thing but if you are building a pc make sure you drop your parts list down in the comments and i will roast uh, I mean, review what you've got and let you know what I think you might be able to improve. Either way, YouTube thinks that you are going to like this video over here next. So I will see you over there. <laughs> Cheers.